and sunshine. And now my flight's delayed. Guess who's back home? That I'm off to Arizona. Hi, my name is Flossy. I'm a bi-hemispherical traveler. Living in British Columbia, Canada in my home-built van, my tiny home on wheels. I'm back in New Zealand right now, traveling the length of the country in a van. And I'm excited to share with you this magical, subtropical country where I was born. My hair has always been an important thing to me, something that makes me feel myself. And every so often, I enjoy mixing it up a little, mirroring, mirroring my own shifting perspective on life. Oh my god, you top it off. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready! And that often comes out as a change or dramatic haircut or a changing hair color. My hair has been looking great since, especially now that I have better products to take care of my curls, like leave-in conditioners that work really well with living in a van. Also, who doesn't love a fresh fade, a clip or a cut to make you feel great before going out? In this case, to see my friends who I had not seen in over five years since I left Australia. This is a magpie. Different from the Northern Hemisphere, but the same size as small corvid. They're amazing. They make an amazing song. This guy apparently is not interested in food. He's interested in eating, which really makes sense because it's lunchtime and I'm hungry too. I'm oh, it feels so nice to be on the road. <laughs> oh. oh, the smell is wonderful. It's this mixture of big pine trees and the sap from the gum trees just emanating into the air because of the heat and the warmth and breeze and it's beautiful and my nervous system needed this i spent a week in a bit in the city in melbourne and i needed to come here and like be in the middle of nowhere i mean middle of nowhere is relative this isn't really that, but it's rural. It's a lot more rural. A little rural town and it's lovely and it smells good. It's quiet. <sighs> Look at this big tree. Like I can hear myself think again. Like part of my body is just, my nervous system is just recalibrating and relaxing. I loved Melbourne when I lived there, but my body that at that point in time was going that pace. My body doesn't go that pace anymore and I prefer it. I'm still really busy. I still do a ton of stuff. I'm still always active, but there's this energetic level where things slow down and I feel like I can hear the trees talk now. I can hear the birds more. I can hear the bugs. <sighs> I'm more in touch with the magic of being in nature. Yeah. Kangaroos are marsupials. Damsis kangaroos lying down sleeping. The bush, which is how the forest is referred to here, is very different to the rainforests of the PNW 
Pacific Northwest that I now live amongst. Gum trees are everywhere and the air is thick and heavy with the scent of bark and leaves. This one I get. Never seen ones like that before. The collective noun for a group of kangaroos is guy. a mob. They're jacked. He's just like looking. Oh, hi guys. Yep. That's Big Daddy over there. And that, I think that is so fitting when you see the big, big male kangaroos. In Australia, from kangaroos to cocktails. As you know, if you've been watching for a while, that I love a good gin tasting or a very unusual liqueur. So with one of my best friends in Melbourne, we headed to a cute boutique distillery to taste their wares. I've such a big interest in brewing even though I'm not a big drinker at all. I think the science and eclectic flavors that you can make and mix all fascinate me so much. I've made my own mead and apple ciders before, so I'll link the videos for that above if you want to check them out. What the heck is that thing? What? I want to know what that is. If you know in the comments, text me down below, like, what is that? And I got... Ooh, it's a big bottle. This one, I'm very excited to try it. Oh, and did I mention that distilleries have so much cool copper things? Right up my alley. My best friend here and I are headed to the Mornington Peninsula to the hot springs there. A gorgeous outdoor myriad of baths to reconnect. And for me, for a beautiful recharge from the stress of the city and getting that storage unit closed and saying goodbye to all of my old possessions that I left here five years ago. It's so pretty! Wow, the frogs are really noisy. I love being in the outdoors so much and there's nothing I like more than the outdoors is being outdoors and warm and in the water. It was a beautiful treat and put me in such a good mental space for the last few days that I had here in the Southern Hemisphere. This is not a pahuta car, it's a gum pahuta. It is it? It's not, it's a gum tree? So beautiful. Right? <laughs> Everything in Australia wants to kill you unless proven otherwise. I guess so, but you know what? Since we've been here, I haven't seen anything that I would consider harmful. <laughs> I don't want to see the brown snakes. <laughs> no thanks. There's also a blue tongue lizard that likes to bite small children, which I'm very, very fond of. <laughs> I need to find out what kind of jellyfish it is. They're so beautiful and so big. I think there's a lot of them on this beach. 
And there's some big seagulls too. Like this guy. Two of you are not seagulls. These very cool looking birds though. Look! Look what I found! Possibly a flounder or a fat flatfish. So cool! Melbourne is one side of a giant bay, sometimes called a bite, and where the city is in the centre, either side are beautiful peninsulas and more beaches and of course the wild open ocean. It is so unbelievably good to be out of the city. I've spent a week in the city emptying my storage unit, visiting and catching up with a ton of friends who I used to hang out with all the time while I lived in Melbourne. And now we're at the ocean! It is gorgeous. It's a little overcast so it's not too stinking hot because Australia can get really, really hot. And we've come to the bluffs where it's a little wilder and there is so much more to see in the rocks under the water. And I'm gonna take you with me. Traveling can really take its toll. It can wear you out, it can take away any sense of routine, normalcy, or rest, because you're always on the move. You're often in other people's spaces. You're not in your own space. So yeah, I have been really feeling that I've been away for a month, maybe five, almost six weeks now. And holy moly, it is catching up to me. So this break to come to the ocean is exactly what I needed with people who I really care about. <sighs> and sunshine! My love of the ocean started in Australia and New Zealand. The water temperature here in summer is plenty warm enough to go in naked or in the smallest of garments. Often wetsuits being worn to protect you from sharp objects underwater, unless you plan to be submerged for a longer period of time. When I moved to the Northern Hemisphere, the pull of the ocean was still so strong and relentless and not being able to afford the luxury of scuba diving, I turned to freediving. Freediving is where you dive to a depth, limited only by your own ability to hold your breath and keep your heart rate low and calm and the ability to equalize the pressure in your ears as you descend down, with the aid of weights, through the different layers of atmospheric pressure of the water, which increases the deeper you go. I'm always super cautious of diving for the first time in a place that I've never really been before, especially when there's any kind of surf, as I learned pretty young that a riptide can be deadly. This shelf my friends took me to was amazing. So much sea life and as my confidence grew, the more I edged to the drop off to look beyond. The abundance of seaweeds and green life all swaying back and four with the surge and swell was just mesmerizing.
quieter, more protected area we visited later in the day was the home of the beautiful ocean reclaimed steamship with not much more than a big paddle wheel now being visible and intact. Isn't it amazing? Is it salt corrosion and seagull poo? Or bird poo? I was blown away by the water visibility, as good visibility at home is more a luck of the draw or a gift of winter. I loved diving here, looking for all the little stingrays I could find, nestled away in the reef in the seaweed growth. Amazing. And did you notice? We saw pelicans! These birds are ginormous. Whoa, they're huge! Overstimulation is a thing, travel stress is a thing, travel burnout is real. And I want you to hear this and simultaneously hear that I'm incredibly grateful that I'm able to do this and I'm feeling very blessed that I have the ability and um, that my legal case went through and I have money to do it with, like, in the nick of time. Holy moly. Yeah. I'm glad that stress is done too. I deserve this break. I deserve this. Fuck. Wow. Live in an age where like humans are, we're just like tapped all the time. And it's like people on the outside will look at our lives and go, oh, you have so much free time. You get to like do so many fun things in nature. Like, oh, you live such an enviable life. But like what they don't realize is like we're still at our wits end. Like most of the time. We've been ranting to each other to share a little bit about overwhelm and traveling because both of us have been doing large amounts of traveling in different places and it has been a lot. And now my flight's delayed because they had to swap the aircrafts because they're sending our aircraft for a flight in JFK and gonna give us a flight on a different plane. Could be over an hour before we depart, but at least we're gonna fly tonight as per the current situation. So, cross your fingers for me. I <laughs> hope we get on a plane to go home. Trusting a small flying tin can in the air with my life and the hands of many patient and caring airline crew, I was finally on my way back to the Northern oh Hemisphere. Gosh. Almost home. Almost home. I'm so happy. To my home, my step van siren. The flight is 13 to 14 hours overnight with beautiful sunsets upon leaving. 
and this very weird experience of time travel to still arrive back on the same day that you left having been in the air for more than 12 hours I got to live this day twice back home now I just got to do the ferry from Vancouver to Vancouver Island drive up the Malahat Guess who's back home? And look who's had a bar. Look at this shiny van. <sighs> I missed my home so much. Hi everybody. So I just wanted to finish off this video here with a, a little chat because the last month and a half has been an absolute whirlwind. New Zealand, Australia, the ups, the downs, the weather, and all the expectations I had of going home and what going home would mean to me, and how my relationship to my Southern Hemisphere home, I thought would be reignited or how it would change the way I relate to that area of the world. And I really think that I surprised myself Coming back to BC and feeling like this little van, this forest, this is my home and I feel so good right here. I feel belonging, I feel pride, I feel excitement to travel more in this area to explore more of Canada, to, to explore more of North America, even. Hint, 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 hint. And, um, yeah, I didn't expect that when I left. I expected to go back and reconnect with family and loved ones and have some sort of longing or some sort of pull. I have, in the last five years, I've experienced quite a bit of homesickness and... <sighs> I think loneliness too and I think part of that comes from the state I was in and the lack of community I had at the time which is not the case right now I have amazing community and I feel very lucky for that community truly makes the difference to a place and I've been gone from New Zealand for so long that I only have a few friends and I'm at a point in my life where if I'm starting over in a new place, I want that place to be much closer to where I am now so that the people I know here are able to travel to that place rather than once a year probably seeing them. Seeing the people who you care about once a year is not enough. I finished up working at the end of last year, the place that I had been previously employed at and that was like a really big end of a chapter. So going back to New Zealand at that point in my life kind of was like I was traveling with all of my options open, my heart open, my mind curious. And when I came back to BC, came back to Canada, there was this sense of relief, the sense of belonging and slowing down. <laughs> Speaking of travel, that's, <laughs> my underwear hanging from here drying after swimming um speaking of travel I'm so excited because I've been hinting now for an episode in a bit and my patreons already know this that I'm off to Arizona I'm going to the United States I am so excited um, I am going to my very first larger van life meetup outside of Canada and going to meet people who I've been following on the internet for a while and oh that's so exciting and I'm sure you might recognize some of these folks. I wanted to hint at it a little bit, let you build up some anticipation with me because I'm so excited! Um, I am back in Canada for four days between coming back from Australia and New Zealand to going down to Arizona. That four days was not enough to drive this van down there. So I have chosen instead of driving to fly to Arizona 
pick up a rental van when I'm there and then drive to the places that I want to go with in Arizona. I think that's a much smarter way of doing it. I have found the cheapest option as far as vans go. So I have a roof above my head, somewhere to cook, sleep and eat and travel, drive around with. And I can't wait to show you. I can't wait to show you. It's gonna be really, really interesting. Like life is such an open book, an oyster. You get to create whatever adventures you wish to go on. And that's an incredible thing because Coming back to uh, Canada after that will mean looking for work again, unemployment, trying to find a job so that I can continue to work towards my goal of having a little patch of land somewhere, which at the moment feels a very far away dream. So let's live life to the fullest enjoy every moment enjoy it like it's our last day and you know i was reading this abraham hicks quote that was like what are you doing things that make me happy for what purpose happiness but what legacy do you wish to relieve i am a joyful one what impact do you wish to create i brought joy into the world May you carry that with you today and may you choose to do something that makes you really happy for you so that you are a joyous one for no other reason than it makes you happy. Love, bye. Thank you so much for watching. Pop over to my Patreon and you can join us there for as little as a few bucks a month and it really, really helps me out. I'll see you next Friday and, 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 Hint, hint, to the USA. Bye.